Type hinting in PHP is the closest that PHP will get to static typing in languages like Java or C++. It allows you to tell a method or a function that you are expecting a parameter to come in in the form of a certain class, interface, or callable. On one hand, this is great because you can now ensure that the object passed in conforms to a contract that you are expecting. It's more efficient than doing some sort of type check at runtime and then throwing an exception or something similar since it is a compile time operation, and it's certainly much cleaner to read. Currently, this only applies to those three types that I mentioned before, classes, interfaces, and callables. But there is an RFC in place for scalar types like string, int, etc. to be able to be type hinted as well. I should also mention that arrays do work for type hinting. Traits are not currently type hintable, and I'm not sure that they will add that since a trait is composed into an object, but who knows, uh, some, someone might get crafty. So aside from compile time checking like static languages, what else does type hinting provide you? Well, let's take a look at our first example to see how type hinting can give us a contract for what we expect collaborators to provide. If you remember back to episode four, I touched on this lightly, and this example may somewhat resemble the one from then. So we have two files, renderers.php and example.php. Renderers.php contains three classes, blog renderer, article renderer, and graph renderer. Each have a method named render that knows how to render its own object. In our case, we're just outputting a string each time, but you can use your imagination. In example.php, we have a page class that allows for multiple renderers to be added. Then it contains its own render method to spin through and render all the content of its collected renderers inside of its own elements. Below, we instantiate a new page and add each renderer once to the page. And then we just echo the results of the rendered page to the screen. Here's what the result looks like. Just what you'd expect, start of a page, rendered blog, article, and graph, and then end of page. So for the sake of demonstration, let's assume that this is a large app with multiple different objects that need to know how to render themselves or the collaborators into a collective output. In theory, it seems rather obvious someone could include a render method, but there's no enforcement on it. So if the page tries to render an object that does not have a render method, it's going to blow up and crash the page. You might be tempted to reach for inheritance here to ensure that renderer is guaranteed to have a render method, but what does a blog post have in common with a graph? Probably nothing. Heck, a blog post might want to render a graph inside of itself, who knows. You could potentially make blog and article inherit from each other, but that's going down a different rabbit hole. We really just need to ensure that each object passed into the page class has a render method, and will simultaneously take advantages of interfaces in PHP. In renderers.php, we'll define a new interface named renderer, and give it a public method named render, with no function body. Next, we'll add implements renderer to the end of each class definition and save our changes. Now we'll move on to example.php, and on the add method, we'll add the type hint for renderer before our argument. Now when we run the script, nothing is different on our output, so that's a good sign. But let's try one more thing to make sure it's actually working. Let's add a new page to our current page, and see how this works since it doesn't implement the renderer interface. Okay, so if we run this test again, we're seeing a nice fatal error telling us that page does not implement renderer. This kind of error message is much easier to track down than just a missing method, since it's quite verbose and makes it very obvious what happened. But, like all things in OOP, there is a trade-off. In PHP, you cannot decorate an object with another if you are type hinting based on that original class. Even if you implement a magic call to forward all missing methods to the original object, it will fail the requirements, since it does not implement the renderer interface. There's currently an RFC in place to try to remedy this issue, but it's still quite a ways off. In this case, you can fall back to regular duck typing and just ensure that every object has that method or deal with the method missing error that you receive down the road. One other tidbit I'll mention, but not demonstrate, is that type hinting is actually available to the Reflection API. So you can do some interesting things like make dependency injection containers automatically resolve dependency by inspecting constructor argument type hints and instantiating those objects. The Laravel IOC container does this right now and I'm sure others do as well. I'm personally on the fence between type hinting and duck typing. I often use type hinting where I want to ensure a contract, but I come from a Ruby background, so I'm also from the culture where I trust developers to use code wisely and correctly. I assume that someone will not replace or use an object in a place without ensuring that the methods used are met, whether via trait, mixin, method delegation, etc. I also use many presenter objects, and since those decorate my regular objects, I cannot use type hinting in those scenarios in PHP. Use what works for you. Next episode, we'll cover yet another gray area where opinions rule, composition over inheritance.